Hello viewers and welcome back to the lab. This is part four of the Quantel Paintbox DPB 7001 restoration that I've been working on for the last few weeks. Uh, if you've not seen the previous episodes, I um, highly recommend you go and uh, follow the links in the video description and go and watch those before you watch this. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank all the people that have commented and uh, liked and subscribed while I've been restoring this. Thank you very much for your support. And uh, thank you to our channel sponsor, PCBWay. This episode of Dexter's Tech Lab is sponsored by PCBWay, a full-featured PCB and rapid prototyping service. I've used PCBWay myself, so I know they offer great service and quality, with plenty of advanced options for standard flex and flex rigid PCBs. PCBWay also now offer a rapid prototyping service for CNC machining, sheet metal work, 3D printing, and even injection molding. If you want to see more of what PCBWay have to offer, go and visit the links in the video description. So if you remember back to episode three, um, I was investigating the software crashing on the computer one and computer two cards when it was trying to initialize the main cards in the system. Initially, I thought it might have been an issue with the brush address or brush processor cards, uh, but that turns out not to be the case. Um, the error that I was seeing on the screen was uh, actually the software just randomly crashing. Um, so once I realized that was happening, um, I went through and started back again on the computer one and computer two cards to find anything wrong with them. And indeed I did find a problem. Um, it turns out that uh, this EEPROM had gone bad uh, since I last um, looked at it. I made an image of this um, quite a few years ago. Uh, but since then, this has now gone, um, it's not completely failed, it's a bit flaky. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And that was causing the software to crash. So I, I managed to burn a new one that's in. Um, and since that's gone in, the crashes have completely gone away. And the system wants to boot. Now, before I turn this on and show you where we are at, uh, I just want to uh, bring you up to speed on a few things that have been happening um, in addition to that. Uh, firstly, I've got uh, the tablet, uh, the pen, keyboard all down and connected up. I've also got the floppy drive. Now, the tablet and keyboard, uh, I had already kind of proven to be working um, a few months ago when I was working with um, the Mog Miner, who's been working on the DPB emulator. Uh, he needed some information, um, technical stuff from this, from the actual working one, um, to help his emulator. And um, from what I saw on this, um, even just looking on um, oscilloscopes and things like that, um, it all seemed to be working absolutely fine. So I was pretty confident this was going to be good. Now, one issue I did have uh, when I connected this up is the cable that I thought was the connection cable between the tablet and the, and the machine. It turns out it wasn't. I think it was just some random cable that had just been thrown in and everybody's down the line has just assumed that it's the cable that connects the tablet to the DPB, but in reality it isn't. Um, so I had to go through all the schematics and work out which wires went where because um, it's not a RS-232 connection this, it's actually an RS-422, uh, which is uh, a, basically a differential version of RS-232. So that was a pretty simple job just to rewire the cable, make it work. Now, one other improvement is with the power supply. Um, so I'm just gonna move the camera around a little bit. I'll get this turned around so I can actually show you what's happened on the power supply. So here around on the back of the machine, we have the power supply. This is uh, fits into a cavity just in here. Uh, if you remember on the um, one of the earlier episodes, I had an issue with the high flex power supply that was in there originally. Um, that wasn't working, so I replaced it with two um, Aztec MVP power supplies. So what I've done here, um, let's get this out, is these have been mounted in here. Let's just reposition the camera so you can see them a bit better. Yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better fit for these power supplies fitting into this cage. Um, now, I've had uh, these metal plates made up by uh, GRS Engineering. Thank you very, very much, Gary, for making these uh, mounting brackets. Um, it allows me to uh, mount the two power supplies together and then mount that into the original frame. So we've got uh, one on the top and uh, one on the bottom, which is slightly bigger because this part is actually sliding onto plastic runners in the back of the machine. 
So yeah, as you can see, we've got a nice big plate there which sits on the bottom. So it just allows me to be able to install the power supply like that. Everything all lines up. Um, and uh, the weight of the power supplies is all supported. So that can just slide home and push into place. So before I power this on and actually show you uh, some of it working, um, I just want to thank all those people who have helped me along the way. Um, sorry, I probably bombarded a few people with loads of gibberish and what about this, that and the other and uh, uh, But I'm sorry, um, it's just because I'm passionate about getting this machine running. So uh, thank you and sorry to all those people I've pestered. This machine is not fully working. Um, there's still a ton of issues we need to look at. Um, but today is a very, very significant point uh, because we can actually boot into the main painting uh, functions uh, and you can actually see it on screen. And this will be the first time that uh, the DPB has ever been videoed uh, in any kind of quality. All the other videos that I've seen on YouTube have been really poor VHS quality, not garbage because they're just historical, but um, we've never ever really been able to see the DPB in any sort of quality. So you're hopefully going to see that today. Now, another thing I should point out, I've actually only booted this machine once before. Um, I basically chanced it a little bit um, and I'm going to try it again and hopefully it'll behave itself and, and we can actually get a bit of capture for this so you can actually see it on video. Um, future work down the line should me make it much more reliable and safer to power on. Now, the reason why it's um, a bit unsafe at the moment is down to the uh, floppy drive and the brush master discs. So whenever you bought one of these machines from Quantel, they supplied you with a brush master disc. Now this contains uh, the brush bitmaps uh, and a text brush, which is used to generate the text in the menus. Now, of course, this would have had the hard disk attached to it. Now what you do if you had a blank hard disk is you would have to copy the brush master files um, from the floppy disk and copy them onto the hard disk. Uh, we don't have a hard disk working here, but I have managed to configure this so it only believes that there's a floppy drive. So it will try and boot um, and load those brush master files off floppy. Uh, but it does mean I have to use the original floppies. Made an image of these many, many years ago uh, using Cryoflux. Um, we think the image is good, uh, but we've got no real way of, of verifying it. It has been used in the DPB emulator um, and that does appear to work. So we're pretty confident we do have a good image, um, but it does mean here today, I do have to use uh, one of the original discs to try and boot this. Right, uh, first off, I'm going to boot uh, the system into the console dialogue um, mode, which is some of the engineering menus uh, first. So I'm, I've got this set up and I should, I just need to hold down this button and switch it on. And there we have the console dialogue. Um, so in here, um, there's a number of uh, options just to help diagnose and do various um, maintenance functions. Um, I won't go into um, all of these because I don't need to and we can look at that in a future video anyway. So uh, there's a number of disk options on here. Uh, you can see uh, DSTAT, uh, which is disk status. Um, the floppy is offline at the moment because there's no floppy disk in it. Um, I apologize for all the glitchy video that we've got here. I'm not quite sure what is causing that. Um, it shouldn't be there. So maybe in a future video, we can look at that as well. So yeah, you can see a number of functions on here. We've got things like initialize, um, delete, backups, copies, all that sort of stuff. So uh, really handy stuff. Uh, we have a pen test, uh, which is the uh, the tablet test. So pen test. So you can see here, as I move the pen around, um, you'll have uh, the coordinates changing. Um, swiping will generate a swipe. And uh, of course we have uh, improx and pressure and things like that as well. So. That's working absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, hit the reset button um, and that will allow the machine to uh, boot normally. Um, it won't because there's no floppy drive in, 
um, and I'm uh, only capturing the video from the diagnostics output so you won't see anything else other than text. So if I reset, uh, you'll see it comes to this uh, menu which is basically saying Quantel Paintbox Pro uh, 4.06 uh, it's PAL system and it's waiting for drive zero to run up. Um, drive zero is configured as the floppy drive. So at this point, if I pop the brush master in, it should run up. Um, but just before I do that, I'm just gonna pop the disc in um, and just check that we can still read it um, in the console dialog. Okay, what we're going to do now is uh, start the system up again. Uh, we're going to go into the console dialog and we're going to uh, attempt to read one of the brush master discs. So, now we get our floppy disk. So, D start. Okay, that does appear to be reading. Okay, so what you're actually seeing here is the list of the files that are on this floppy disk. Um, I'm not gonna go into the format of this disk because it's quite complicated. Um, it's quite unique to Quantel. But there you can see we have a uh, new text brush, which is the uh, font which is used in the menus. Uh, we've got the normal brush in different sizes, the chalk brush and the airbrush. Uh, so if I just press return now, we should be able to carry on. Uh, 29 tracks in use. Um, tracks is also files, uh, which is quite interesting. Okay, so from here we should be able to um, boot into the painting. Uh, fingers crossed. So I'm just going to reset this um, and it'll uh, reboot and begin to load the, um, all those files. picked up the serial number. The serial number comes uh, off the brush master as well. Right, so that is it. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to the actual real video output coming from this. So as you can see, we've just got a white screen. So if I head over to the tablet, we should get a cursor. Yes. And swipe. Brings us the menus. Wow, how many years has it been? So very, very similar menus to the, uh, the normal V-Series machine. Um, so if we try and paint something. The reason why it's accessing the floppy drive all the time is because it has to keep reloading the brush into the brush store. Um, so the brush store is used when it generates menus um, and in painting. So every time you switch between the two, it has to reload. So there we go. And we'll have a quick look at the full page menu. So we've got various options in here. Uh, I'm not gonna keep this on very long because I don't wanna use this floppy disk uh, much longer. Um, as I said, I want to make sure we've got definite back backups of it. So I don't really want to use this much longer. So I'm just gonna have a quick look around the menus. Um, it's all very similar. Um, sorted, diagnostics. Um, using console, oh right. Probably need 
to escape. Ah, so I can just tap down and it comes back. Okay, I'm going to power this off now. I don't want to use this floppy drive uh, anymore um, until my cryoflux arrives and I can try and take a, another image of these floppy disks. So there you are. After all these years and all the things that this machine has gone through, it's running and it's absolutely incredible. We've actually managed to get here, to be honest. I never really thought it was possible. Now, where do we go from here? Um, there is a lot more to do. Uh, the floppy drive needs sorting out because I can't keep using those uh, brush master floppy disks because they will just wear out and die and they I can't go and ask Quantel to make any more so it's literally those two. Um, so I'm going to be looking at replacing the floppy drive with something else. I'm not entirely sure what that will be just yet. Might be a GoTech, might be something else, not sure. Um, so there's going to be a, a videos to come on that. There is also all the floppy disks that came with this system. Um, some of them are for the Quantel paint box, some aren't, uh, but there could well be images on there from the BBC um, from way back in the 1980s that nobody's ever seen since then. So it'll be interesting going through those. Um, I might consider doing uh, some kind of live stream with that um, because that might be fun and interesting to do. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something that might appeal. Um, another thing to look at is the big uh, Fujitsu hard disk that came with this machine. Um, that's had a bit of a torrid history as well. Um, I've never been able to get it to do anything other than just power on. Um, but it has been connected to the wrong types of system. Um, it might all change when we actually plug it into the uh, paint box. Um, because the disc format is just so unique to uh, Quantel, um, any other machine that would have uh, been plugged into it would have just basically seen it as a blank disc. Um, so uh, plugging it into the, an actual working paint box, it might just spring to life, you never know. And there's, there could be 300 megabytes worth of images on there if it's working. Now, because the paint box is not designed to work uh, just from a floppy disc, it is designed to have a hard disc there. Uh, we need to come up with some solution to uh, replace the hard disk. So that might be a hard disk emulator um, of some description, I'm not sure. Um, for those of you who don't know that the, the hard disk in this system is called an SMD disk, uh, which is called a storage media device. It's a very old technology, dates back into the 70s. The video input side hasn't been tested. Indeed, the video input cards aren't even plugged home at the moment because there's some blown components on at least one of them, so they need to be replaced and repaired. So that's another thing to do. So the list is rather, rather long on where we go from here. So uh, thank you very much for all the people supporting. Thanks for the people who have helped. Um, you're all awesome. Um, there's gonna be more videos coming up on this uh, pretty soon, so stick around. Um, I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. Bye for now.